Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Dar Devergal, I'm Evan Skilleter, and it's opening night of high school football in the state of Ohio and right here on WOSN as the Pandora Gilboa Rockets host the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and Dar. It's the annual battle of Route 12. These two very familiar with each other facing off in week one once again. Oh yeah, they've been, you know, this battle has been going on for so long. I don't know if anybody can remember when it started. It even started before the Pandora Gilboa combined as a school. You know, they, you know, had Gilboa and, and Pandora before that. And, you know, but it, it's a great rivalry. I mean, you know, just up the road from each other, what, 10, maybe 12 minutes apart. You know, and they battle. And the last few games, you know, series that they've had between the two of them have been really close. A couple of overtime games not too long ago. And, uh, you know, so I expect the same thing again tonight. And, and both teams have lost some players from last year, but a lot of them, a lot of good players are back again this year. So I expect a real good battle out there. Kind of contrasting styles of play between the two of them sometimes. But, you know, you know, I expect you know that they're going to really put it all out on the field tonight. Absolutely. It's Thursday night lights here in Pandora as we are ready to get underway. Game delayed by an hour, but kickoff is here as this one's up and lands around the 23-yard line. Picked up by Aiden Morris, and Morris sent out of bounds immediately. And the Rockets will start on offense eight and four a year ago. They'll be led by quarterback sophomore Corey Girton, who played nine games last year. Completed 69 of his 108 attempts for nine touchdowns, six interception, and Dart, he's a guy that we saw come in due to an injury and play very, very well as a freshman. Oh, he absolutely did. And in, in the playoff games, I mean, he, in, he threw for almost 800 yards, nearly 800 yards in those two playoff games. I mean, he just, he can light it up out there, but they got some really good receivers out there in that Pandora team. And they'll start with the ball on the ground, wrapped up in the backfield, but breaking the tackle is Andrew Miller. Miller tackled ultimately at the line of scrimmage. And Andrew Miller, not a name we're familiar with because in the backfield in the last few years, we've been used to Ethan Luganville, the workhorse for this Pandora team, but it's a new era and Andrew Miller with the first carry. Yeah, and, and they need that too, because like I said, they do have good receivers out there, but when you're playing the spread offense the way the Pandora does, you gotta set up your run a little bit to get these linebackers to you know, keep them honest out there so they're not driving back on your receivers all the time. Curtin will pass this time out of the shotgun. Pumps comes down, throws it over the top, and incomplete. That was intended for last year's leading receiver, Aiden Morris. Morris last year, 70 catches, over 1,000 yards. In fact, 1,123 yards and 13 touchdowns. But that time incomplete brings up third down. Well, Aiden Morris is a guy out there that not only is a great wide receiver, but you know, he had eight interceptions for, with two touchdowns on interceptions last year. He had one touchdown on a kickoff return as well. You know, he also is their punter, averaging about 32 yards a punt. You know, first team all state. And you wonder why? That's why. You look at those stats on him. Now it's running back Ben Burkholder, the sophomore, in the backfield to Girton's left. He goes in motion. Girton with the snap, rolling that way. Now throws over the top and out of bounds, incomplete. Intended for the second leading receiver a year ago, Colin Harris, the senior. Now you wonder what that rain that we had earlier on did to the field. I mean, you can see it. The grass is a little bit longer, and you know the re wide receivers are running their routes and stuff. But is that slowing them down a little bit? Their timing's a little bit off right now. It is the first game of the season, but you know that kind of conditions on playing fields can make a big difference too. No question at all. And. It's three and out early for the Rockets as Morris goes back to punt, back to return. Number three, Trenton Barraza, who we'll talk about here shortly. Also back there is Devin Geckel, I believe. Nope, pardon me, that's Zach Reynolds. And now a false start against Pandora, so they'll back it up five yards. Yeah, not something you want to get right off the bat because that's not going to give Columbus Grove excellent field position inside the 50-yard line unless he gets off a really long punt. You got a little bit of breeze now blowing, and that may you know affect his punt as well. Ball backed up to the 18-yard line. Morris gets the snap. This kick is away. It's high, and it will take a bounce at the 48-yard line and. Ultimately picked up at the 44, but I believe they'll give it to him on Pandora's side of the field because a player touched it. Yeah, bounced right up into the chest of the player. So 
nothing he could do about that. But uh, again, like I said, good field position for Columbus Grove to start this. And we talked about, you know, in their backfield, you know, Trenton Barraza, you know, first team Northwest Conference running back. He's also honorable mention all state in the running back as well. So, you know, it's good for Columbus Grove to have him back, but they've got a pretty decent size front line anchored by the right tackle, Ethan Johnson, 330 pounds, six foot five. So it's Corey Girton's sophomore counterpart, Landon Best, running the show for this Columbus Grove offense. He gives it to Barraza. Barraza hitting the backfield, keeps his feet, falls forward for two yards, and a flag comes out at the 48-yard line of the Rockets. Like Jake Fisher got in on that one there. Referees having a chat, and they will call hold against Columbus Grove. And this year, a new point of emphasis is a penalty is actually marked off from the spot of the line of scrimmage, excuse me, instead of the spot of the foul. So this time, it's 10 yards from the original line of scrimmage, and it brings up first down and 20. Yeah, that's going to make a big difference in a lot of things. So now Barraza lined up behind Best. Best takes the snap. They'll keep this one on the ground. Barraza up the middle with space. He gets back the penalty yards and maybe an extra one. The ball actually came out on the play, and it's recovered by Columbus Grove. Not sure if they called him down or not. Either way, a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it brings up second down eight. And that shows you the value of Barraza right there. He's, he's not an overly big kid. I mean, he's 6'2", 175 pounds, but he's low to the ground. When he shoots through that hole like that, you know, your linebackers better be, you know, very observant to know where he's at all the time. That's a good tackle by Lane Lee, uh, Jr. for uh, Pandora Gilboa. Jet sweep to Barraza, makes one man miss, needs to make a couple more miss and can't. Brought down there for a loss of two yards. That's Ian Smith in the backfield. Excuse me, no it's not. It's Jake Fisher, like you said earlier. Yeah, Jake Fisher, big kid out there. Senior, six foot, 230 pounds. But again, a nice play there by uh, you know, Lane Lee to contain Barraza on the outside until he got some extra help out there. It's a third and nine. That's a long nine for uh, Columbus Grove. They really haven't been able to move it past that mid, you know, midline stripe. Three wide receivers split out to Best's left. Barraza to his left as well. No one on the right side. Best rolls that direction. Looks to pass, looking deep, nowhere to go. Makes a man miss. He'll keep it on the ground. Won't get enough for the first down as he is hit after a gain of about four yards. He'll be five yards short of the first down and a fourth down coming up. Great coverage there by Pandora Gilbo in the secondary. Didn't give him anywhere to throw the ball and, he, and then they made him pay for it on that sideline when he got down there too. But, you know, good hold there by Pandora Gilboa. You know, and they'll see if they can get their offense geared up to go. I know it's early, but this is one of those spots where you could consider potentially going for it or faking this. Yeah, got three guys on the up, up right there, so, you know, any one of them could take the ball. Snaps good. They will kick this one away. Off the it's side of his foot. Trevin Baxter, and it rolls down to the 22-yard line of the Rockets. They'll come back out when we return. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's game is presented by Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 0-0 on that Hawker Drywall scoreboard. The Rockets start their second drive of the night with Girton alone in the backfield. Takes the snap, little pitch pass forward. Morris down the right side. He's looking for some space, and he's wrapped up by a host of Bulldogs for a gain of right around two yards. Yeah, good pursuit down the line by Columbus Grove on that one. That little flip to Morris and let him run around that end down there, but Columbus Grove was not fooled by it at all. They had three or four guys come down the line there and just stop him right there. Officially a gain of three for Morris. It is a completed pass. Rockets with a second down, seven. Two in the backfield now 
with Corey Girton. Andrew Miller as well as Lucas Deckard. It'll be Miller on the ground up the left side. Nice hard run, but an even better tackle right there as he's brought down hard by Landon Houston. He just laid right all over him on that one there. Grove doing a nice job of filling the holes quickly. You know, they're not giving up a whole lot. They only one or two yards on each carry, but you know, they're filling up the holes with one or two guys. It's a gain of two for Miller, brings up third down five. It's gonna be a tough five right here. Two wide receivers split either direction. Miller stacked on the right side. Girton takes the snap, looks to pass. Has a man over the middle, throws it over his head. And a fourth down coming up for the Rockets. And it looks like another three and out. Yeah, just not getting the timing down yet. I mean, you can do it in practice all, all week long and you know, leading up to this point. But in game situations, it's a little bit different. And you, you know, you got defenders out there and everything else. And that one's just thrown a little bit over the top of him. And again, I think, you know, you can see the, the receivers when they're coming out of the backfield, you know, slow down just a little bit with these conditions. But, you know, they'll, they'll work it out before the scheme's over with. Trenton Barraza, the junior, back to return this kick. Hayden Morris back to punt for the Rockets. And the Bulldogs are coming. Coming hard, almost blocked. Morris able to get it away, but it's not very far. Takes a Rockets bounce into Bulldog territory and Columbus Grove will start from the 47. Again, about the same spot they started last time. They started about a yard inside Pandora's territory, now a couple yards into theirs. And see what the Rockers can do on defense again. They've made a nice hold on the first series for Columbus Grove. Can they do it again? Not a single first down yet in this game, but your first down sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete. Best. Again in the shotgun, Barraza lined up to his left. Three wide receiver formation here. Best fakes the pitch, keeps it up the middle. Picks up a couple on first down as Andrew Miller comes up for the tackle right at midfield. Yeah, we talked about Pandora Gilbo and having some good wide receivers out there. Columbus Grove does too. I mean, they're they're not as you know seasoned, I don't think, as, as Pandora's, you know, obviously with Aiden Morris and Colin Harris. But they do have some guys out there in Zane Stecholdi, Zach Reynolds, you know, guys like that. Brady Basinger, they're they're tight end, and you throw in Kyle Hopkins as well. You know, these guys, you know, like I said, they're young, but not as seasoned as Pandora's, but they have good hands as well. And now we've got a Dale's Concrete first down as. They keep it on the ground with 44. That's Josh Gannon. Gannon, a nice sized running back. He's a junior, 5'7, 175 pounds. To be honest, he looks a little bigger than that. Yeah, he does. Here. He also plays defensive lineman so <laughs> at that. But, you know, that was a quick hitter right up the middle. Good, good play call there by Columbus Grove's coaching staff. Still in the backfield, but they'll give it to Barraza. Barraza makes a man miss in the backfield. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. They do give him one. So a one-yard pickup brings up second and nine. But a good job by Pandora getting in the backfield as we've seen most plays so far tonight. Oh, yeah, that was Carson Meyer on that one there coming from his linebacker spot, shooting a gap through there to get into the backfield. He, you know, he couldn't wrap up, you know, Barraza back here, but he gave his guys time to get back here with him and help him out. Very aggressive defenses both uh, both these teams have. Best alone in the backfield. Now tight end on the right side of the formation. Barraza in motion. Best wants to pass. Throws over the top and oh. in and out of the hands of the receiver. A good jump on that one by Isaac Stahl in the defensive backfield. Yeah, Stahl caught, cut right in front of the receiver, and I think that's what really threw the receiver off. Ball was a little high. You know, he went up for it, but it's kind of hard to see when you got a guy cutting right in front of you like that. that brings up third down 10. 5.39 on the clock, still 0-0 here in Pandora on the Hawker drywall and plastering scoreboard. And I don't think we've had a hookup between quarterback and receiver yet on either side. Barraza in motion, best fakes to him, best with some time. Out of the pocket now, steps up, throws out of bounds. 
Rushed there by 34. That is Andrew Miller, excuse me. It brings up fourth down. I think that was Andrew Miller on, on that rush along with maybe uh, Dalton Durst, perhaps. A defensive end coming in there on that sideline too. Now Best had a lot of time, but you know, again, well covered on the, um, by the uh, Pandora you know, Bill secondary. So Baxter goes back to punt once again. Morris back to return. Morris, please, on. Well, we've seen matchups like this with Pandora Gilbo and Columbus go before, you know. Being the first game of the season, we see a lot of them where they go, you know, scoring for about the first half a lot of times, and then all of a sudden, boom. Nice spiraling punt inside the 10-yard line. Well done there by Baxter, and Columbus Grove not winning on the scoreboard, but winning the field position game. Yeah, they pinned Pandora back there, you know, every time, and the Rockets have just not been able to connect. You know, like I said, I don't think we've had a connection between, you know, receivers and, and quarterback yet on either side of the ball. The ball was down at the nine yard line. Hydration break on the field, so we'll step aside. It's 0-0 here in Pandora. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. And tonight's touchdown sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling. In Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. First down and 10 for the Rockets. They give it to Miller. Not much space as he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And we've talked about it already early on here. These defensive lines for both teams looking fantastic early on. Oh, they absolutely are. They're both, you know, they're not overly big. So, you know, they got a couple big players out there on their defensive lines. When you look at Columbus Grove, of course, anchored in the middle there by number 75. But you look at, you know, across the board, they're quick, they're fast, they get to the holes quickly. You know, they plug things up and they can tackle really well. Second and nine, pass out to the right side. It hits the turf before the hands of Aiden Morris. Incomplete pass brings up third and nine. Morris, the intended receiver, pass incomplete. Both quarterbacks struggling here early on. But you talked about, I mean, it rained most of the day today. It led up right around, I don't know, 6 or 6.30 after they had already pushed the game back to 8 o'clock. And it's been tough sledding for these quarterbacks, getting their footing and, and completing passes. Well, and it really does. It affects your timing really bad. I mean, particularly receivers. They know where they're supposed to be, but you're getting a slow start off of the line of scrimmage, and then you got to make the cut. Pass out to the right side, caught by Harris. Harris wrapped up. He doesn't have enough for the first down as he gets near the 17-yard line. He needed the 19. I'll tell you what, Evan, we talked about, you know, Aiden Morris and his accolades and what he did. Colin Harris was a second team all Northwest District last year, you know, at wide receiver. And he, he had almost, you know, 881 yards receiving and 10 touchdowns himself last year. This, this Pandora offense last year just threw the ball everywhere, you know. And they didn't expect to, you know, have much of a let off because they got Girton in there after he came in for last year for those last games. Rockets punt this one away. Nice high kick this time by Morris. And that one's caught at the 48. That's Dropped brave. briefly, but they're <laughs> able to recover. That's brave. So this drive will officially start at the 47-yard line of the Rockets. They're going to have that spot worn out right there for Columbus Grove because they, you know, it's either three, two or three yards that way or two or three yards back this way. That's right. They haven't played, <laughs> they haven't much played. outside of that 10-yard span in the middle of the field. That rocket in the middle is not going to look like a rocket before long. <laughs> Landon Best back out there. Barraza will line up behind him. Two wide receivers split out left. 
best. Claps, hands to Barraza. Barraza with a nice pickup on first down. One of the better runs we've seen so far tonight. He picks up around six yards. He dropped there by Eli Cobb, it looked like. Second down, four yards. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage go the Bulldogs. They'll keep it on the ground with Barraza. Nowhere to go this time as he's wrapped up from behind by Carson Meyer. Yeah, Carson Meyer kind of throwing him down there. Then you throw in number nine there as well. Eli Luganbill there as well. That's a pickup of one. So third down three. And again, the Bulldogs moving quickly. Try to get the Rockets to jump offside. They don't bite. Play clock at 18, plenty of time. Best steps up, communicates with the line. Looks like he checked off on that call. Takes the snap, quick pass out to the left and can't complete it. Intended for Kyle Hopkins. Looked like he was trying to lead Hopkins forward and Hopkins was working on going west and, or east and west, excuse me. Yeah, I think Hopkins was just thinking, just get the ball to me out here in the flat and I'll go, you know. But you're right, I think he was trying to lead him down the field. And again, you know, you gotta make that cut to go up the field and that's not easy out here. Just one first down so far in this game. Back to punt once again is Baxter. Morris back to return. Baxter, his last punt down to the eight yard line. Snap to his right, catches, kicks it away. This one looks like it'll bounce into the end zone, and it will. So the Rockets will start the next one from the 20-yard line. When we return, 2.33 to go in the first quarter. It's high school football on WOSN. Tonight's game is presented by Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back to Pandora Gilboa High School 0-0 here on the Hawker Drywall and Plastering Scoreboard. Rockets starting the drive from the 20-yard line. Curtin looks to pass, throws out to the left side. Man oh, look falls out, down. Look out. It's complete. Colin Harris up the left, ultimately brought down, but not after a big gain. And our guy, Hot Dog, falls over on the sideline. No, no, that's Tony Quatch, excuse me. Hot Dog on the other side. <laughs> Watch out over there, Mr. Quatch. Big gain by the Rockets, and that's a Dales Concrete first down. And a tough break for Columbus Grove because their defensive back fell down, slipped on that turf out there, and that left you know, Colin Harris open on that sideline. A beautiful pass by Girton, too, just laid him right out there, you know, right into his hands on full stride. Rockets take a snap from the Columbus Grove side of the field for the first time, and it's a big pickup by Miller. Breaks a couple tackles and gets another Dale's concrete first down up to the 21 yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, Evan, they started on the 20 yard line, the best field position they had. They get that long play there, and now they get a nice run on this one here. You think their momentum, you know, they, now their adrenaline start to pick up a little bit. No question. They're back to the line of scrimmage quickly. They'll keep it on the ground. Miller with another hole. Miller into the defensive secondary, and he's got another first down. So a bunch of three and outs for Pandora to start, and now three first downs in a row for the Rockets, and Dale's Concrete getting their money's worth on this drive. They certainly are, and I, like I said, I, you know, I think Pandora's kind of feeling a little bit. You know, they weren't able to get anything going, and all of a sudden, you know, now they can't be stopped. They split two wide receivers, one either direction. Miller in the backfield. Girton hands it back to him. This time Miller wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up a yard or two. Looks like Kyle Latham there that grabbed a hold of his ankle as he went through. Might have a player down on that one. Yep, looks like he's he's all right. Well, this is one of the keys that uh, Coach Hershey said and wanted for the, uh, Pandora Gaboa is that we have to score in the red zone. We can't get down there, you know, make mistakes or get penalties or anything else. We need to score when we get inside that 20. Inside the 10 here, second down and goal from the eight yard line. Girton, snap, he's gonna throw a fade out to the right side and over the head of his target, Morris, or excuse me, that's Harris. Third and eight now. Well defended by Riley Sauter out there. Second 
Yeah, this is a key third and eight for him. Gurton runs the play in. Now the Rockets for the last couple years have had a pretty good kicker in Elam Suter. He's gone and their kicker this year, number 54, Skyler Richardson. Gurton fakes, throws over the middle, player goes down and yeah, here comes throw the flag. It. And that'll be an automatic first down. So a new set of downs for the Rockets to work with inside the 10 yard line. I would imagine half the distance to the goal would put him on the four. Yeah, you didn't see exactly what happened to him. All you could see was the player, you know, Pandora player flying in the air there. Looks like he may have been caught on his leg and then flipped him over. There were two referees looking at the same <laughs> instance. One threw the flag, one didn't. And it looked like perhaps the wide receiver ran into the defender, which yeah. you wonder, is that a pass interference? Well, I suppose we got our answer. Now they keep it on the ground. Morris will carry this one near the goal line, but down at the one. And correction, that was not an automatic first down on the last play. Now you got a decision to make. You got a fourth and one. And I think it's going to be one for Matt Hirsch. He's going to say, you know, we're going, we're going to go for it. We don't want to try our new kicker all, you know, put him under that pressure all, already. He's putting faith in his offensive line to push that defense back. Gurdon under center, takes a snap. Morris into the end zone. The Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown for the Rockets. Great job by the Rockets to recover after, you know, three series where they weren't moving the ball at all. Then just to get down there as quickly as they did and then per persevere and just push it into the end zone. Aiden Morris with the first touchdown of the year. And on comes the kicker, Skyler Richardson, 5'11", senior. Those orange shoes, you can't miss him. Colin Harris will do the holding. Good snap, hold, kick. Nice and straight and through the upright. 7-0, Pandora on top. Seven seconds left in the first quarter. We'll have them for you after the break right here on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Welcome back. It's 7-0. The Rockets on top after a one-yard touchdown scamper from Aiden Morris. And Morris will kick this one back to Columbus Grove, and I thought we were going to go a whole quarter without seeing a score. I did Mr. too. Morris nice. says no thank you. Yeah, nice 80-yard drive there by uh, Pandora Gilboa, keyed by that long pass connection between Gurton and uh, Colin Harris down the sideline. This kick's low, and it's picked up by number six on the far side. That's Zach Reynolds. Reynolds wrapped up. Return of about five yards, and so Columbus Grove will come back out. They've started every possession from right around midfield. This time they'll start from the 28-yard line. Well, let's see if they have better luck, of, you know, starting farther back. They weren't able to move the ball that well when they were inside the the 10 yards, you know, atmosphere that they were in. But uh, let's see what they can do from way back here. Ball actually placed on the 27-yard line. Two wide receivers split out to the right of this formation. Reynolds split out to the left. Barraza lined up behind Best. Best fakes the handoff, keeps it himself up the left side, picks up a couple. And the clock hits zero on the first quarter, so... After one on the Hawker drywall and plastering scoreboard, it's Pandora 7, Columbus Grove 0. We'll step aside. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSN.
Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. One touchdown in the first quarter. It was Pandora striking first. They lead 7-0. Evan Skilleter, Dar Nevergal with you here. And the second quarter starts with a pass out to the left side, completed to Zach Reynolds near the first down marker, but a yard short. So we'll have a third and one. That was a nice little play there by Columbus Grove. Just a quick out, you know, just a flip it over there on the sideline, nothing spectacular or anything like that. Well, something they really needed to have because they weren't really connecting up until that point. Needed a yard, picked up two on the quarterback keeper. So the chains move on the Dales concrete first down. Now Columbus Grove had a decent season last year, 12 and three, a long run into the playoffs. You know, head coach Andy Schaefer been there for 16 years now as head coach of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. You know, a 93 and 72 record. Great coach, consistent program at Columbus Grove. Here's the snap, they'll keep it on the ground up the left side and Wrapped up for a gain of maybe two. And one thing you can expect when these two teams meet is a lot of hard hitting out there. You know, they lay everything out on the line on that field between the two of them. And, you know, you see a lot of, you know, I saw one earlier on, you know, just bang, you know, those kind of hits. They feel it the next day. <laughs> no question. Josh Gannon was the ball carrier there. Brings up second and eight. Two wide receivers split out to the right side. Barraza in motion. They'll look to pass. They throw over to Barraza. He catches it, but he's wrapped up immediately as Aiden Morris sniffed that one out. You could see him running toward Barraza before the pass was even thrown. And he drops him for a two-yard loss. I, I could just see it in Aiden Morris's eyes right there. You know, well, there comes the ball. I've got a shot at it, too. But I better get the runner, you know, the receiver instead. So he went right for Barraza. But yeah, you know, you know what these guys are thinking out there as defensive backs. You know, they're thinking interception every time they can. Loss was actually four yards, so it brings up third down twelve. They split two wide receivers out to the left side. Best looking that way. Rushed oh, and look at brought that. down. How about the speed on the outside Whoa. there by Ben Burkholder? Best never saw him wow, as he, he tried did. to get out to he the didn't. left side. And Burkholder didn't give up at all on that one there because he just kept right on coming. And, you know, a sophomore, 5'11", 180 pounds. And, you know, that boy had his, beat, and his eyes beaded right on the back end of that quarterback, and he was going to get him. It's a loss of five yards, fourth and 17. That's wow. nine yards of loss in two plays for Columbus Grove. Now it comes Trevin, Trevin Baxter, excuse me, to do the punting. Good snap, he got a nice one away last time. Here's another nice spiraling kick. It'll be grabbed by Colin Harris with room to return. Makes one guy miss. Working up the left side, makes another one miss. Ultimately brought out, brought down, excuse me, but a nice pickup and the Rockets offense comes back out. Nice tackle there by Brady Basinger for Columbus Grove. He's only a freshman, but he did a nice job of pulling Colin Harris down. Because if you let Harris out there, that boy has some speed. And you can see from that, he, he kind of has that little hitch run he does. He kind of stops a little bit, tries to pull the defenders to him, and then he blows right by him. Return was up to the 44-yard line, first and 10 for the Rockets, coming off their first scoring drive. Curtin in the backfield, Burkholder behind him. It's Miller to his right. They give it to Burkholder. Burkholder puts his head down and picks up a yard. A host of Bulldogs on the tackle. On the bottom of the pile was big number 62. That's Kyle Lathrop. Yeah, there's not a lot of room up there in that middle of that Columbus Grove, you know, defensive line. You got Connor Douglas out there. He's 275 pounds. Girton back to pass. He throws this one deep down the left side. Harris behind the defense, makes the catch. Did he get a foot down? 
I think he's going to call it. Waiting on the call. And it is complete. A big catch there by Colin Harris. And your instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. My goodness, what a grab. Now, there's what your senior can do for you. That He had his eyes on the ball the whole time. Got his foot down. I don't know how he got his foot down before he was hit. You know, but he managed to do that and complete that pass. Big gain, ball down to the 25-yard line of the Bulldogs. Brock Stahl runs in and splits wide right. And Coach Hershey might think about a timeout here. Play clock down to two, and he will with 7.38 on the clock. We'll step aside, first and 10, when we return. It's opening night of high school football right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 7-0 on that scoreboard. The Rockets on top, and they're 25 yards away from another score. They keep this one on the ground, and a good pickup on first down as Andrew Miller picks up about four. Yeah, good job there by uh, Andrew Miller. Filling in the, you know, filling in the spot that you know, they had from you know, Lukaville last year just ran those kind of runs constantly all last season. And Andrew Miller was picking up right where he left where he left off. They officially give him three yards. Second down seven. Girton this time has Carson Meyer to his left. He'll hand this one off to Miller. And Miller picks up two. So we'll have a third down five. And the key for Miller is hang on to that ball. When you hit that line up there with those big deep defensive linemen up there for Columbus Grove, hang on to that ball because they're going to hit you hard. We've seen a lot of those hard hits here tonight. Two very physical teams. I always say this about Putnam County, but anytime you step foot in this county in a sporting event that's a contact sport, you're yes. leaving with bruises, no question. That's even in basketball. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's a first down out to the right side of the Dale's Concrete first down. Carson Meyer out there. If you're a sophomore quarterback like Girton is, I mean, you've got to be happy to have three seniors out there in your wide receiver core. You know, have veterans out there that know how to run their routes and how to grab that ball. You know, like you saw Harris doing that sideline catch he had, you know. I mean, you can just about throw it out there and just, you know, let those guys do their work. Absolutely. Girton with a good year last year. If you missed the beginning of the game, we said 69 of 108, nine touchdowns, six interceptions. Now we'll hand this one off to Morris. Morris breaks a couple oh. tackles. Nice hard run there. Shades of Ethan Luganville yeah, on really. that run. You, know, look, you got about three more yards with the help of the, you know, half of his team. And Morris, that extra effort, picks up a couple more. It's a gain of three, second down seven. And Pandora being very methodical in their offense and, you know, calling in their schemes and stuff. You know, just, you know, carrying the ball with Andrew Miller and, and then throwing a pass and then giving it back again to, to Morris to run the ball. Girton alone in the backfield. Throws a fade route. It's Look Morrison. Out. It's a touchdown. It's Aiden Harris, excuse me. And Harris with the score. Now it's Colin Harris. His twin is Aiden. But either way, it's another touchdown sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling. And again, you see the good hands of Colin Harris. Again, that ball was, he picked that out of the air above his head, just like he did on that sideline pass. He's got great hands out there. You know, and again, like I said, if you're a sophomore quarterback and you got those seniors out there, let them run their routes, they'll do their job. Back on for the PAT is Skyler Richardson, one for one tonight. First one looked great. Snap good, hold, kick, nice and high. Was it straight enough? It was not. So he misses the kick, score remains 13-0 with 5.09 to go, we step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN.
Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. Call them for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Two touchdowns in this one, both to the Pandora Gilboa Rockets as they, they are set to kick this one away. Aiden Morris, the right side. That's off the hands oh. of Columbus Grove. It's a live ball. It looked from here like the Rockets have it. We'll have to see. They were excited initially. Now everyone not too sure. A sneaky play there as it's right through the hands of the Bulldogs and still waiting for a signal. Wow. Wow. They haven't pointed either direction. Not a single player is excited over there. Is he trying to determine if it went 10 yards or what? And I think they're going to give it to the Bulldogs. They are indeed. Okay, so a lot that happened, but ultimately Columbus Grove football, the Rockets did indeed catch them off guard, though almost got the result they were after. Yeah, that was that was an interesting play call right there. You know, you're up 13 to nothing. You know, why not? It's early. You know, let's try everything we can. So Columbus Grove starts from their own 45. Landon Best back in the shotgun. Barraza lined up to his right. Three wide receivers split to the right side. They'll keep this on the ground. Barraza running left, a little bit of space wrapped up and falls forward for a gain of around three or four. I was going to say, I, this would be good field position for Columbus Grove, but they've been here too many times, and, you know, and they haven't been able to move the ball out of that spot in there. Let's see if they can uh, you know, correct that. They need to connect on the outside with those, and those wide receivers. They have some seniors out there, too, in their wide receiver core. They just got to hit them out there. Again, you got a sophomore quarterback on that side of the ball. Best will keep this one on the ground. Runs it up the right side, picks up three yards, maybe three and a half. So a third and short coming up. Best did a nice job of hanging on that. You can see somebody going for the football and kind of pulling it away from him. He was able to pull it back in. Ball to the 47-yard line of the Rockets. Brings up third down three. Just over four minutes to play here in the first half. Trips out to the right side. Columbus Grove looked a little confused, but they keep the ball on the ground. Flag comes out. I don't think everyone was set at the line of scrimmage. They got close to the first down. In fact, the referee's standing on the line, which means it would be a first. But the flag comes out, and I believe we'll have illegal motion or illegal formation. Yeah, he wasn't set over here for sure. I mean, he was kind of waving at the quarterback. Referees having a chat. We'll get the official call here shortly. And they do call an illegal shift. So from the line of scrimmage, it'll be a five-yard penalty. They'll redo third down. It'll be third and eight instead of first down. They moved the chains and the down marker, so a little bit of confusion as to where the last line of scrimmage was, but the referee, at least on this near side, looks like he knows exactly where it yep. was as he's standing on the 48. The scoreboard actually shows the ball was on the 47-yard line, which is right where they marked it off. So the ball back to the 48. Third down, seven yards to go. And again, Columbus Grove being mired in that one spot right there. And uh, there you know, you go. they can't seem to get anywhere on five yards one way or five yards the other way around that 50 yard mark. Two wide receivers split out to the right side. Best has Barraza to his right, man in motion. That's Reynolds. He'll throw back to the left side. That one's complete to Brady Basinger. Basinger nowhere to go as he picks up maybe a yard, maybe two, but either way, not enough for the first down in a fourth and five coming up. 
No, a good fundamental defense there by Pandora Gilboa. Again, you know, their guys keeping the positions, holding them where they're supposed to be, you know, not letting them get around that corner down there. But a, a nice play call by Columbus Grove, really tried to just get something going on that one side. And a whistle blows as the ball was snapped. It's a dead ball, and Columbus Grove, excuse me, Pandora, called their second timeout of the half with 3.03 to go. So we'll step aside, fourth and five coming up after the break. It's 13-0, Pandora on top. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Fourth and five as this one's punted away by Columbus Grove. Ball takes a hop, and the Rockets will just let it go down at the 16-yard line. Good coverage there by Columbus Grove. They got down there in a hurry and a nice smart move by you know, Aiden Morris just to let it hit and stay there. And also an underratedly smart move. Underratedly is a word that I think I just made up. Either uh, way, it works. A I fantastic like move by Columbus Grove, not touching the ball and letting the referee yep. blow it dead. It runs a couple extra seconds off the clock. And the Rockets with only one timeout remaining in the half and two minutes, 54 seconds to go till halftime. Yeah, Columbus Grove wants to force some kind of turnover right here. and get. You know, they need some kind of break. I'll keep it on the ground. This is Andrew Miller up the left side. Miller finds the edge, and Miller with a big time. Dale's concrete first down, and he goes out of bounds, so the clock will stop. Ball all the way up to the 35. I tell you, I've been impressed with Andrew Miller. I mean, he's a junior coming in here, filling some pretty big shoes from, you know, Luca Bill from last year, and he's really done a nice job. And there he showed a little bit of his speed getting around the corner down there cruising up that uh, sideline. 2.46 on the clock. Girton in the gun, takes the snap, fakes the pitch, looks to pass over the top. He's got his man behind the defense, oh. but just overthrows him. Good looking play there as Colin Harris got in behind the D. Shows the arm of Girton on that one there, because that was like, what, about 45, 50-yard throw. Yeah, that one had some air under it. Now, Colin Harris grabbing his jersey as if he was held getting around the defense. But no flag on the field. So second and 10 coming up. Six seconds ran off the clock. I'll tell you what, I'd go right back to the well on that one. Harris had his man beat. This time they go short, little comeback route. It's successful as it goes for nine yards. Third and a short one. They need to get the 45. They're up to the 44. Houston, the tackle. The ball at the 44. Third down here. Miller lined up to the left of Girton. Trips out to the right side. And it looks like the Rockets jumped offside. And so it'll be backed up five yards. It'll be third and six rather than third and one. It's the right guard that jumped for the Rockets. But the passing game really starting to come along for Pandora. Now, Girton's feeling a lot more comfortable out there. I mean, we like we said, we saw him last year. I mean, he came you know through for almost what 1,100 yards last year, but 800 of those yards came in those last two playoff games when he really started to light things up, you know, and started to fill his own, you know, and get familiar with his, you know, his receivers. And he's got those receivers back. There's 17 letter winners back for this Pandora team. So, you know, they didn't really have to make a lot of adjustments. You know, it, Miller stepped in now and, and done a nice job on the running back position. But, you know, they've had, had their offense pretty much set. Nice pass over the top as Colin Harris kind of sat down in the midst of three defenders, took the pass in for a catch, and another Dale's concrete first down, 157 on the clock. It stops as the chains move. Up to the 46-yard line go the Rockets into Bulldog territory. And you got to like a receiver that will go into that, you know, right into the middle there with three guys around him, you know, and, you know, sacrifice his body if he has to to make that catch. 
They'll keep this one on the ground. Miller makes a guy miss in the backfield. Breaks another tackle as he gets close to another first down. It's an eight yard pickup, a second and two coming up. 126 and counting on the clock. And like you said, Miller really starting to get going as well as that passing game. Yeah, that was the one thing that they, you know, hold that they really had to fill on that offense. And, you know, he's just stepped right in and done a nice job. And he's getting great blocking up front by this, you know, Pandora Gilboa offensive line. On the ground again, Miller gets really close to the first down. On the far side, it looks like he's short. We'll have to wait for the official spot. We might see a measurement. We're at 59 seconds on the clock. Ball spotted right near the marker. How do you Head run official out the taking clock? a look. Or do you take a, a shot at the end zone one more time? I think when you're this deep into Pandora territory, or into Bulldog territory, excuse me, you might as well take a few shots. We saw Gurton air it out deep a couple times here tonight. So we will have a measurement. And we saw Harris beat his man down there. Just the ball was overthrown by Gurton as well. You know, I would take that shot for sure with 30, 59 seconds to go. A nice shot for you here from our guy Jacob O'Neill on the sideline. Hot dog right on it. And it is going to be short. Third down and inches. With 59 seconds on the clock and only about a foot to go. Have to imagine it's at least a thought to Coach Hershey to go for this. I'd be shocked if he didn't. I would be too. But this is the play really you can make that shot deep down field. If you don't make it, you're going to run off you know, a few seconds off the clock, and then you're still sitting at a fourth and one if it's incomplete. They stay under center. So if it is a deep pass, it'll be play action. They actually give it to Miller. Miller has the first oh, down and out. more. Look out. Miller breaks a tackle ah. but drops the football. And the Rockets give it up in great field position. A tough one there after a wow. first down pickup. And Columbus Grove with three timeouts and 48 seconds on the clock. We'll take over from the 20 yard line. 20 yard line. Well, he had a nice run there, and I'm not sure what, you know, kind of sidestepped around a guy and got, got hit off balance, and the ball popped out. Now, if you're Andy Schaefer, what do you want to do? I mean, take a shot downfield, hope one of your guys can break loose from the defensive backs, because you're looking at a defensive back back there in Collins Harrison, your, your safety out there for Pandora Gabo with lots of speed. Three wide receivers on the left, play action. They throw it over the middle, it's caught. That's Reynolds over the middle. Reynolds has a Dale's Concrete first down. Bulldogs quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Won't need to use a timeout as the clock stops as the chains move. Best thinks about passing, no one open. Rolls out of the pocket, still no one open. Now throws, and it's out of bounds. Clock will stop at 24 seconds. Good job of getting out of that pocket at all, because he looked like he was going to be contained back there, and he was able to get out there and at least get the throw off. There's nothing else that stopped the clock, so they still got, you know, 24 seconds on the clock. Second down and 10 from the 35. Ball on the 35-yard line, second and 10, empty backfield. Barraza in the slot on the left side. Four wide receivers, two either way. Best pulls it down, Best takes off, Best has space. Best across midfield, across the 40, up to the 39, make it the 38, no, all the way to the 37. And another Dale's concrete first down, 13 seconds on the clock. Again, they're quickly lining up. Don't have to call a timeout. Certainly could if they wanted to. Clock ticking at nine seconds. Best throws quickly out to the left side. They stay inbounds. They'll have to take a timeout here with three seconds. Pass 
Now comes your big decision time. And with that timeout, three seconds left, the coaches and players come onto the field. Want to remind you, by the way, that WOSN is a nonprofit organization sponsored and supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. You can go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. And Dar, everywhere I go, when I tell people what I do, this is, I would say, a hobby for me, a hobby that I certainly really, really enjoy. And I tell people what I do, and they are astounded by the level of high school sports coverage mm -hmm. that we have in Northwest Ohio. Now, there are a lot of great TV stations, but it is such a blessing to work for WOSN and such a blessing to be supported by so many local businesses and so many sports fans here oh, in Northwest absolutely. Ohio. Absolutely. So thank you all so much for your support. Thank you to all our sponsors, as always. And if you own a business and you'd like to sponsor some of our programming, please give the station a call. We'd be happy to chat. But in the meantime, we've got a pass over the top, knocked away by the Rockets, and the clock hits zero That's in the it. first half. With that, we will step aside. The Rockets fired up, leading this one 13-0 as they head to the locker room. We'll have the second half after this break. It's high school football on WOSN. Welcome back for the start of the second half here in Pandora, the, where the Rockets are on top, 13-0 over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Evan Skeletor, Dar Nevergall with you. Grace Beck on the top cam and Jacob O'Neill down on the sideline bringing you all the shots. As we are underway here in the second half, the kickoff picked up by Zach Reynolds and Reynolds breaks loose, crosses midfield and Columbus Grove will start in good field position, Dar, after a first half. It saw zero scoring from the Bulldogs. Well, it'd be interesting to see what Andy Schaefer talked to his guys at halftime about, because that's a great start there for Columbus Grove. That first half for Columbus Grove was a rough one for them. They really could not move the ball that well. You know, they had a couple long plays. But most of the time, they were spending all their time between the, you know, the 45s, you know, in the middle of the field, and they not even go anywhere. Pandora kind of settled in after a while. The Girton kid, you know, kind of got his feet out from underneath him. I mean. And he was able to hit up with his receivers better. So, you know, they were able to move the ball and stuff. But I expect a different team in this second half for the Columbus Grove. And they just showed it right there in the opening kickoff. And that run right there, you know, a good run up the middle. Barraza goes for five yards to start the half your scoreboard, sponsored by Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Second down, say a long five coming up. And that's one thing they weren't able to do, the Bulldogs in the first half, was break Brazza lo loose pretty much for anything. You know, Pandora, of course, keying on him. They know what he can do. But he wasn't able to really get anything going. And Best wrapped up in the backfield. Oh. He goes down Eli in the backfield Lugenville. early, like Dar said. Eli Luganville. There's wow. a host of Rockets back there. I don't know if they were trying to set up a screen because they seemingly let the Rockets get back there. Yeah, he just, he never, nobody really touched him when he came in there, you know, and, you know, Landon Best just didn't have a chance on that one right there. But that's the speed of this Pandora Gilbo Rocket, you know, defense as well. I mean, they got some nice speed out there and able to get into the backfield in a hurry. It's a loss of 11 yards, third down 16 here. Best alone in the backfield, looks to pass, now steps up. He's got some space to run, makes a couple guys miss. He's got a first down and more, makes another one miss as he goes down inside the 25 yard line. It's a Dales concrete first down, but a flag down at the 40 yard line. And it's gonna be a hold against Boy, that's a tough the one. Bulldogs, oh goodness. That's a tough one because that was a really nice run by Landon Best, and he did one like that earlier in the, you know, in the first half as well. But you know, really made a nice run up the middle and cut through and just made guys miss and stuff. So that's a big one. Now we're back into the 50-yard line again. The ball placed down at the 50-yard line. So the ball back to the 50-yard line. I spoke earlier about a new rule that I thought was in effect, which was 
any penalty by the offense would be marked off from the line of scrimmage, but that time they marked it off from the spot of the foul, so perhaps I misread the rule. Either way, it's another third down, third down 13, right from midfield. Yeah, back in that spot that they unfortunately have been there most of, the, most of the night. They try to set up a middle screen, they can't get there. Now a sidearm throw in and oh, out of the hands wow. of the target after a big hit from Brock Stahl. Brock Stahl, senior, six foot, 160 pounds, and he laid all 160 pounds on that receiver. So that brings up fourth down 13 after a big hit. Your replays tonight sponsored by Simplified Flooring. Baxter back to punt once again. He's had to do a lot of work tonight for the Bulldogs. Again, Columbus Grove, you know, got off that quick start on that kickoff return. Nice run on their first possession, or in the first down, but now back at that 50-yard mark again. Good snap. Kick is away. This will be Morris to return. Morris has some space up the field. Morris makes a guy miss. He's hit hard, but a nice return, Morris about 15, return. maybe 16 yards on the return. And out comes the Rockets' Myers, offense. Nice tackle by Ty Meyer uh, on that one there for Columbus First Grove. 10, Drive will start from the 35-yard line. From Quarterback Corey Girton, the sophomore, back out for the Rockets. Threw for nine touchdowns last year, six interceptions. He's got two wide receivers split either direction, a runner in the backfield. I see the Rockets are probably, you know, I could see him going for the juggler right now. Quick pass out to the left side. Here's Morris. Morris trying to get the edge. A flag comes in. He picks up a yard or two, but that flag in the area of holding, they threw it right at Colin Harris, who was blocking on the outside. So that'll back Pandora up 10 yards. And really, Evan, for a, for a first season game, you know, we really haven't seen that many, many penalties. So both teams play a pretty clean game. That's a know. good point. Ball on the 25-yard line, first and 20. Two runners in the backfield, wide receivers split either direction, tight end on the right side of that formation as they give it to Miller. Miller up the middle, picks up a couple. Second and long coming up. And are sticking to their game plan pretty much. You know, Miller up the middle a couple of times, then you go to the outside with a quick pass, and then you try one downfield. This time they'll split three wide receivers to the right side. Miller still in the backfield, lined up to Girton's left. Curtin looks to pass, has some time, now throws and over the head of Colin Harris, who's made a couple nice yes, grabs above yes. his head, but that one just out of reach. Yeah, that one was a little bit up. But anytime you throw it in his vicinity, you, you got to think maybe he's going to catch it. So that brings up third down, 17. So if you're Rockets, I can see a little flare pass out to the, you know, just out the outside, and I hope that Morris or one of those guys can break one and loose. We've seen a couple times where they've thrown it over the top. Looks like that's what they're going to do here. Ball up for Harris, and in and out of his hands. Great coverage downfield that time by Trenton Barraza. And so a fourth down 17, and the punting unit comes out. Yeah, that was a little, you know, nice arm again by Girton on that one there. And you know, like I said, anytime you throw it down there for Harris, anywhere around him, you know, you, you think he might come down with it, but Braza all over him on that one there. He had the position on the inside. You know, Harris didn't have a chance of catching that. And again, Columbus Grove with an opportunity to get good field position again. Braza back to return. Aiden Morris back to punt. Bulldogs stack the line of scrimmage. 
Looking to block this one. They won't get to it. Kick is low. Takes a hop at the 43. Barraza thought about it and then lets it roll out at the 34-yard line. So the Bulldog offense will come back out onto the field. 8.39 to go. It's 13-0 Rockets on top. We'll be right back with that drive after this on WOSN. Tonight's game is presented by Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. First and 10 as this drive starts for Columbus Grove. They trail 13-0 here in Pandora on the Hawker drywall and plastering scoreboard. That ball pops out, but the whistle blows it dead. Ball carrier was down after a gain of about four yards. That's been pretty much a pattern for Columbus Grove tonight. You know, their first down, they're getting three, four yards on that first down play, and, and then it kind of just fizzles out. They're not able to really push the ball down the field. You know, we've seen a couple good runs by Landon Best to get them some really good field position, but they just can't get over the hump. That's the biggest thing. And, and give credit to the Rocket defense for that too, but you know, a little bit of timing issues for Columbus Grove. Best fakes the handoff, he keeps it himself and he has enough for the Dales Concrete first down as he gets right to midfield. Uh oh, bad spot. <laughs> there you go. Don't, don't get on that 50 yard line, guys. <laughs> if you miss the first half, Columbus Grove spent their first three drives right between each 45 yard line. And they start out there in the second half doing the same thing. And I don't know if it's something about that rocket right in the middle of the field from, you know, the. Two wide receivers on the right side. They keep it on the ground. It's a pickup. Oh, oh, still nice on his job. feet. A nice pickup on first down. That's Josh Gannon on the carry. Gannon gets to the 42. You can't ask for anything more than that. Just keep running north and south. Keep your feet moving and just keep barreling through. Make it the 43, so it's second down three. Well, they're out of the dead man zone, so let's see what they can do now. Reynolds and Kyle Hopkins split out to the left side of Best. He takes the snap. He keeps it again. He's hit hard, but keeps his feet. And he's right at the 40-yard line, actually gets up to the 39, and that's enough for a Dales Concrete first down. First down. Yeah, we don't have any stats, but i, I tell you what, that Landon Best has had a nice job of running the ball tonight. First able to pull it back in and take off on a lot of those things. And their passing game hasn't been able to connect that much, but his feet have been, you know, paid dividends for this Bulldog team. Referees trying to spot the ball. They're moving it over to the far side. Now they're going to blow it dead. I think they just want to switch footballs, I guess. So get a new ball in. First down 10, ball at the Rocket 39 yard line. Three wide receivers split up to the right side. Gannon lined up to the right of a new quarterback, Wildcat formation is Bo Bernesser back there. Bernesser tosses this over the top and in and out of the hands of his target. That was Zach Reynolds trying to bring it down. Great effort by Reynolds though on that play. Just reaching up and you know coming down hard on his back too. Bo Bernesser, the 6'4", 220 pound senior. Listed as a tight end, little wildcat formation there for the Bulldogs. It looked like it was going to be a successful play, too. Nice little pass out there. Brings up second down 10. Two wide receivers split either direction of best. He takes a snap, little option play. He's got space, now pitches it to Barraza, oh, and he's man. wrapped up in the backfield. Ben Burkholder. Trips Barraza up and drops him for a loss of three. Well, we've seen Burke Holder do that a couple times tonight. Just great pursuit by that young man coming out of the backfield. 
you know, just tripping up Barraza, and that's not an easy thing to do because when Barraza gets around those corners, man, he's, you know, he's got some speed. And Burkholder just right in there, knock his feet out from under him. They call it a loss of two, so third down 12. Best alone in the backfield. Tight end on the left side of the formation. Play clock at seven. Here's the snap, the throw, a little comeback route. It's caught. They need the 39, excuse me, they need the 29-yard line for a first down. And they come up about four yards short. So a fourth and short coming up. Pass caught by Zach Reynolds. You're in a position for Columbus Grove right here that you got to go for it on fourth and five. I mean, you haven't moved the ball effectively all night long, and you're now in Pandora's you know territory. You've got to go for this fourth and five. Two wide receivers split either direction. Barraza in the backfield to Best left. Best, the snap, looks to pass, nowhere to go. Now throws, he's got a man wide open. That's Kyle Hopkins with the grab. He was all alone in the middle of the field and it's a Dales Concrete first down for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, great job by the offensive line for Columbus Grove. He gave They gave uh, Best all the time in the world to sit back here and wait. and and wait for Hopkins to find himself open over the middle like that, you know. But Best, you know, just had all the time in the world to look around. Snap a little bit low. Best able to keep it. And he's still on his feet. He's a little guy, but he's yeah, he tough. Is. He carries about three defenders, a couple extra yards. That's a nice first down pickup. He's 145 pounds, and he's using all 145 pounds of him. It's a five-yard pickup, second and five. Columbus Grove putting together a nice drive. It started back near their own 30-yard line. Down two scores in the third quarter. Not too big of a gap, and now a nice pickup on second down, Josh Gannon. Not quite enough for the first, so it'll be third down and about half a yard. Quickly to the line. Still in shotgun, here's the snap. Best uses his feet for the first down, oh, stays up. He reaches out and no call yet. They say he's down just shy of the goal line, but nonetheless, it's a Dales Concrete first down and now Columbus Grove a yard away from their first score of this game. Yeah, he kind of got spun around there and was able to stretch out there and try to get it from the goal line, but that's a dangerous play, too. Can be knocked the ball loose. Best keeps it. Best into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. And Columbus Grove on the board. 13-6 with a PAT pending. Pretty no-nonsense play right there for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they were able to survive the penalties and still keep the ball moving down the field and just consistent all the way down. Here's Evan Verhoff to kick and shades of his older brother is that one up through the uprights good. and in. And it's 13-7 on the Hawker drywall and plastering scoreboard. We'll be right back after this right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. Simplified Flooring, we make flooring simple. 2.44 to go here in the third quarter. It's 13-7. Pandora Gilboa on top on the Hawker Drywall and Plastering scoreboard, but it's Columbus Grove so far winning the second half 7-0. Yeah, they came out, had a nice run off, right off the bat on the kickoff return. Got down there, survived a penalty, but consistently moved the ball forward. And that was the big thing. Just consistently kept getting yardage, getting yardage, and a nice pass for a first down, you know, to set up that touchdown. 
Oh, just a short kick there. Fair catch called for by Isaac Stahl. So back out comes the Pandora Gilboa offense. Now the key for Pandora is, you know, have a nice long drive. I mean, eat up as much time as you can, keep Columbus Grove off the field now that they've got some of the momentum back and just kind of drive it down the field. But you got to finish off with points when you get down there too. You can't just get in the red zone down there and not come away with something. You know, but you want to keep Columbus Grove to kind of pull that momentum back away from them. They'll keep it on the ground Ooh. here and Burkholder hit hard in the backfield. Big tackle by Kylan Mays. Whoa. My goodness. I felt that one up here. An injured player on the floor. He's getting stretched out. But Kylan Mays, what a hit. Again, your replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring tonight. And with that, we'll step aside. Two and a half to play here in the third quarter. It's 13-7, Pandora on top. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Tonight's touchdowns are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Welcome back is Pandora. With a second down 12, they try a little pass to the left side and gobbled up. Right after crossing the line of scrimmage is Colin Harris. Picks up a yard, brings up third and 11. It's amazing, Evan, how fast momentum can change in the game and the, and the flavor of a game can change. And right now you're looking at Columbus Grove side, side and they're really fired up. I mean, they moved the ball down, got, got their touchdown. Now their defense is, you know, picking up where, where their offense left off, and they're really out there hitting hard. And just you can see it, the difference, you know, from the dejection they had in the first half. Here's a third and 11 pass oh. right to the defense. That one's picked off. Going the other way is Zach Reynolds. Reynolds on his feet. Reynolds into the end zone. A touchdown. No flags on the field. And this game is tied. 37-yard interception. That probably picked it off another 10 yards down from that, so probably a good 47 yards on that return. Reynolds with the interception for the touchdown. That is a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. A big one from Zach Reynolds and a chance for the Bulldogs to take a lead. No score in the first half, down 13-0 at halftime and now two scores within three plays for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and he was pretty much out there in, in no man's land by himself. That ball, you know, obviously somebody was supposed to cut through there or something and, and just didn't, wasn't able to, but that ball was right out there where he was, you know, all alone. Some confusion for the Bulldogs in their special teams unit. Fairhoff lines up the PAT. Snap, hold, kick, and it is good. The Bulldogs now with the lead, 14-13 on the Hawker drywall and plastering scoreboard. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back to Pandora Gilboa High School where the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove have taken a 14 to 13 lead. Two scores in the last two minutes of play to go on top. I'll tell you how fast things can change. I mean, you know, it looked like Pandora Gilboa had this game you know, they weren't up. They were up two scores. Looked like they kind of had it wrapped up a little bit. You know, but Columbus Grove just coming back strong. Just kicked down to the 12-yard line. Morris will return, and he gets near the 25-yard line. In fact, 
They put him down right at that 25. Now it's a gut check for Fandor Gaboa. How do you respond after that? You no, know, two quick sco scores by Columbus Grove. You've got to pull it together now and, and drive down the field. It will be interesting to see how the offense comes out after the interception. First down and 10. They line up with two runners in the backfield. It's Andrew Miller directly behind and Ben Burkholder to the right of Corey Girton. They go to Miller and Miller breaks a tackle. He's brought down by a helmetless bulldog. <laughs> Miller, the carry. Looks like we've got another player down needing stretched out. But that play goes for a loss of five yards. And with that official's timeout, we will step aside as well. 118 to go in the third quarter. It's high school football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Second down, 14 for the Rockets. Injured player up and ran off the field, no problem. Girton takes the snap, fakes, now throws deep down the left side, and a jump ball knocked away by Barraza. That's been a fantastic matchup I'll all night. You. It's gone both ways. Barraza with a couple nice breaks up, break up, ex excuse me, and Colin Harris with a couple nice catches. Yeah, that's a real battle out there between the two seniors. You know, and and really, yeah, and both the times, you know, Barraza's had positioning, and yet Colin Harris was able to come down with a couple passes. And that time there, though, another break up on that side over there, and just man. Third and down long. Three wide receivers out to the left side. Girton, the snap. Girton looks, throws. This one's caught. Harris, enough for the Dales Concrete first down as he nears the 40 yard line. A little bit slow to get up. First down and 10, Pandora, the ball. Looks like he'll be all right as the ball is up to the 40. Well, you got to give credit to Girton, but mostly too to, to Matt Hershey and his coaching staff because after that interception, they're gonna, they said, "Hey, we're going right back at it, guys. You know, forget about that. It's over with. We're going to move the ball and we're going to throw the ball. That's what we do." Three wide receivers on the right side. Girton throws. This one is caught. Ooh. That's Harris this time with the catch. Sorry, sorry. That's Aiden Morris. Morris hit hard, and he's a little shaken up after the catch, but it's another Dale's concrete first down as the Rockets move into Bulldog territory. Yeah, those are some brave boys out there because they're going right over the middle, and they know what's coming the other way because, you know, Columbus Grove's going to tattoo them right there, and that's what happened to Morris on that one too. And But yet he's going to catch that ball and run right into that defense. Split formation once again. They keep it on the ground. Andrew Miller. Up the middle, forward progress gives him about three yards. This is an important drive for Pandora. If they can just drive down the field, like we said, sustain this drive, eat up time off the clock. You know, don't give the ball back to that offense for Columbus Grove. And yet, when you get down there in the red zone, put some points on the board, either you know, touchdown, field goal, whatever. But you got to score down there. And that's a big thing for Matt Hershey and his coaching staff. You know, we've got to score this year. Last year they struggled a little bit in the red zone. You know, we've got to score this year if we want to keep up with the big boys. And we'll see if they can score, but we'll have to wait until the fourth quarter as we step aside. That fourth quarter coming up after the break right here on WOSN. It's 14-13, Columbus Grove on top. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Welcome back. For the start of the fourth quarter, it's Columbus Grove 14, Pandora 13 here at Pandora Gilboa High School. Second down seven. Corey Girton throws to the left side, and that one's too high for Harris. 
incomplete and a third down coming up. And that battle continues between Barraza and Harris. Time a little comeback route and we've seen Girton float a couple over his head. That's hard to do as we mentioned earlier. Third down seven. I saw Harris go over and wipe his hands too. He thought, man, gloves must be a little wet. Harris split out to the left side. And Girton rolls left, throws. This one caught. This is Miller. Miller has enough Miller for the Dales concrete down. first down and a big third down conversion for Pandora. Got a little help too from Columbus Grove's tackler too because he kind of pushed him forward for another two yards before he went out of bounds. Andrew Miller, a couple nice carries tonight. That's, I believe, his first catch out of the backfield. And that'll be a big plus for Pandora, too, if he can do that as well. And they're actually, I thought they signaled for a first down, but they've got them at fourth down short. Ah, there we go. Yeah. It is a first down. Chains still haven't moved. Still haven't moved. Still haven't moved. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Uh, go. Yeah, there, there we go. We go. <laughs> now officially a Dale's Concrete yes. first down. <laughs> they must have wanted it in writing or something. I don't know. <laughs> <That's great>. <laughs> <laughs> Empty backfield for Girton. Three wide receivers to the top. Girton to throw. Come back route. That one's caught. Nice pass, and another Dale's Concrete first down as it's completed to Aiden Morris. Morris and Harris both with a lot of catches tonight. I've lost count, but they are the main targets. No wonder why last year Morris with 70 catches, 1,123 yards and 13 touchdowns. Harris had 63 catches, 881 yards and 10 touchdowns. And it looks like a pattern too because Morris is getting a lot of those right in the middle and Harris is going to the outside a lot. This time they'll keep it on the ground up the left side. Ben Burkholder, a flag comes out. It's down at the 25-yard line. Columbus Grove defense clapping their hands. They call a hold against Pandora, so they'll mark it off 10 yards. And that was 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So I've been wondering about this evident new rule that will be implemented in high school football that an offensive penalty is marked off from the line of scrimmage. So far, it's looked like an offensive penalty in the backfield is marked off from the line of scrimmage. Curtin throws this out to the right side. Nice catch there by Carson Meyer. Always a little surprising when someone other than number one yeah, number really. 10 catches the football, but Carson Meyer with the nice jumping grab, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And he made a nice move after he caught the ball, too. You know, kind of spun off to his right and got in about two more yards on that play. You got to mix it up a little bit every once in a while, you know. Second down, 10. Three wide receivers split out left. Harris at the top. Another pass to Meyer who catches it and falls forward for a nice gain and it's gonna be third and manageable for the Rockets. Again, it shows the maturity of Girton from last year to this year. Granted, he had a great second half of the season as a freshman. But you come in as a sophomore, you throw an interception, and but then you come right back out firing on all cylinders, and that's what he's been able to do here. And that shows the confidence that your coaching staff has in a sophomore to run your offense, and he's been able to do that on this particular drive. Big third down for the Rockets. They give it to Miller. Miller puts his head down at the line of scrimmage, keeps his feet going. And he's got a Dale's Concrete first down up to the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Rockets. Wow. 
great job by that young man. Like I said, just keep your feet moving. You got another player down on the field. But just keep your feet moving, and that's what he was able to do. This one with 9.54 on the clock. It'll be first and goal when we return. 14-13, Columbus Grove on top. Tonight's touchdowns are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Welcome back. It's first and goal. The Rockets looking for that Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. They go over the top and incomplete. A dangerous pass there. Girton took a hard hit in the backfield. He was looking for his man, Aiden Morris, but it brings up second and goal. It was a nice play call, though, because Aiden Morris cut right across the middle like that. Ball just a little bit high as Girton, like you said, was getting hammered back there in the backfield. You know, a little bit high for Morris, but a good play call. It looked like he had positioning. Curtin takes the snap, he'll hand to Andrew Miller. He's wrapped oh, up and man. brought down in the backfield. Nice job there by Kylan Mays getting back there and dropping him for a big loss. This is a key third down and 10 now. Third and 11. Key play of this drive right here. Girton, two runners in the backfield, takes a snap, throws a fade to the end zone. Oh. It's caught, and it is a touchdown, Rockets. Wow, what a play. What a pass. Good concentration, too, by Morris out there. Aiden Morris with the big grab. And it's a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown as the Rockets go back on top and they'll go for two to try to extend it to Morris. seven. Wow. This is a big one as the Columbus Grove offense has really started to get things going and definitely want to have more than a five point or six point lead. Curtin under center. Hands this off, left side, nope, and nope. nowhere to go. They fall short, Andrew Miller can't get there, so the score remains 19-14 with 9.01 to go. We'll step aside, big drive for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back as the Rockets with a short kick to the 45-yard line. And Columbus Grove will come back out. They didn't score any points in the first half. They scored 14 in a two-minute stretch toward the end of the third quarter, and now they find themselves down 19-14 and 55 yards to go to score. Yeah, that, that you just got under the ball on that one there on that kick, and because I know you don't want to give Columbus Grove field position like this. Now your defense for Brandor has got to come up big. They need a they need a turnover or something to stop a, a drive by Columbus Grove. Landon Best hands it off. Trenton Barraza finds some space. Barraza up the left side. He beats a man and he is brought down around the 20-yard line and a big pickup for Columbus Grove and a Dales Concrete first down. Well, it's all great running backs. You can contain them for so long, and then all of a sudden they find an opening and, you know, they rack up a lot of yardage, and that's what Trenton Barraza did on that one right there. And, you know, you get him on the outside like that, he made a couple guys bat miss badly and just took it down that sideline. Ball up to the 19-yard line into the red zone go the Bulldogs. Two wide receivers split out right, one to the left. Runner in the backfield, it's Josh Gannon. Gannon 
Doesn't get it. Best actually keeps it up the right side. And a nice pickup as he gets about nine yards. He'll be just shy of the first down and a second and short coming up. You know, they said you didn't want to give Columbus Grove that kind of field position to start out a drive and then have somebody like Barraza, you know, carry the ball down like he did. And that's exactly what happened. And now Pandora's got their backs against the wall to try to stop these guys. Now Grove can eat off a lot of time on the clock themselves right now. Have two wide receivers split either direction. Gannon in the backfield, lined up behind Best. Best claps twice, looks to the sideline. Still nine on the play clock. Now the snap gives to Gannon. Gannon with a hole. Gannon oh, up the right. In. Gannon near the goal line. He is in. It's a touchdown, Bulldogs. Back on top for Columbus Grove on the Northwest Ohio Recycling Touchdown. And I imagine they will go for two to try to push the lead to three. How quickly things turn around in the game, I'll tell you what. It may just come down to who's got the ball last in this game. They huddle up, they will go for two. They'll stay in the shotgun. Barraza lined up to the left of Landon Best. Best takes the snap. He'll run it up the middle and he walks in untouched. And the Bulldogs go up 22-19, 737 to play here in the fourth quarter. We'll step aside. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. That scoreboard reads 22 to 19, Columbus Grove on top, as these two teams trading punches here in the second half. Evan Skilleter, Dar Nevergall with you. Evan Verhoff lines up to kick this one back to the Rockets. And it's another short kick, fair catch called for, and that's exactly how we started this half. As it's Isaac Stahl with the fair catch, and back out comes Corey Girton in the Rocket offense. A nice long drive on the last possession, resulting in a touchdown. They missed the two-point conversion, so they've missed the PAT and a two-point conversion. Columbus Grove with two successful PATs and then a two-point conversion on their third touchdown. And that gets us to this 22-19 score. And we have seen, you know, overtime games in, in between these two teams in recent years. Girton forced out of the pocket. A flag comes in. We'll have a hold in the backfield. He completes the pass out to Andrew Miller. Move the flag up to the 35 yard line. And it is a hold against the Rockets. Another tough penalty. So they move it back 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So again, it's a penalty in the backfield and they mark it off from the line of scrimmage. Something new this year. At least that's the way I understand it. So, back to work. Here's a pass to the left side. That one caught by Aiden Morris. Morris makes oh a couple my. guys miss. Morris still on his feet. Pushed out of bounds at the 48, maybe the 49 yard line. So a great pickup of 19 yards and that'll bring up second and one. That's exactly what you want to do following a penalty. 
Absolutely. And we've got a player down once again. You get a DeMorris on that sideline, and he can do a lot of things with it. With little, you know, ground over there to maneuver around in, he's still able to get five more yards. So the injured player getting stretched out. We'll step aside with 7.16 on the clock. It's 22-19, Columbus Grove on top. Tonight's instant replays are sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Second down one for the Rockets. Injured player able to get off the field under his own power. They're going to throw on second oh. and one, and the Bulldogs get in the backfield and bring Girton down. Boy, that was a mass rush there by Columbus Grove, too. I mean, there's three guys, I think, in that mix that just bull rushed right in there and took him down. So the loss is back to the line of, of the original line of scrimmage to bring up third down 10. Limping off the field is Andrew Miller after the play. I think Miller got caught up in that, you know, just trying to block for Girton. Big third down here, spread formation, Girton to pass, throws, almost intercepted, Whoa. and hits the turf harmlessly anyway. But a nice job by Brady Basinger jumping on that pass and knocking it incomplete. Fourth down, 10. That pass was almost picked off twice. Once yeah, by the left guy, and then by the guy behind him. Oh, this could be the game right here. Fourth down and 10 with six minutes left. Well, they've got Morris in there. He's going to punt this one away or at least line up to do so. Three timeouts still for both teams. Columbus Grove playing it safe. No one back to return. Here's the snap. The ball kicked away. It's a nice looking kick. And again, no one there to return, so it'll roll. Back to the 23-yard line, so Columbus Grove a chance to milk the clock and perhaps put this game away. We'll find out when we return. The score is 22-19. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back, it's 22-19, Columbus Grove on top, and they have the ball as they start this drive at their own 23-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground with Barraza as he picks up a couple. Clock management now, the name of the game as these two teams have been neck and neck most of the night. It was 13-0 at halftime. The Rockets on top, and even through most of the third quarter, the score remained 13-0, but Columbus Grove came alive, tied it up, took the lead, and now they find themselves up three. And they're going to, you know, it's going to come down. You know, you, both teams, like you said, Evan, have three timeouts. You know, when do you use those timeouts? That's going to be key for these coaching staffs. Best will keep this one himself. Runs right into Ben Basinger at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a couple. Line, and particularly for Pandora Gilboa because they, you know, Columbus Grove can continue to run the ball, run the ball, and run the ball, you know, as long as they're moving forward and get first downs. It's going to come down to Pandora. Do you, when do you use your timeouts to stop Columbus Grove from, you know, eating up clock? But you still want to be able to get the ball back and have timeouts available. In correction, that was Ben Burkholder, not Ben Basinger, on the tackle after a gain of two. So it's third down three. And this is a big one here. Rockets with three men on the line of scrimmage. Best keeps it. Best gets hit at the line of scrimmage. And they're still trying to bring him down. They do. His helmet came off. I don't think he has enough. He doesn't. So it's fourth down. But the helmet coming off too. I believe he has to leave the field. And he is walking off the field right now. 
So it's a fourth and two. Their quarterback leaves the field. I would imagine you'd want to punt this ball away for I, field I position so. purposes, especially after seeing the last result of no gain. And I think somebody might have taken a timeout. I didn't see the signal from the referee, but both teams will huddle up and we'll step aside. Fort 13 on the clock. We'll be back in just a moment. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. Call Dale's for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So at the break, they actually brought the chains out to measure, and it turns out it was a Dale's Concrete first down. So Bo Bernesser will come in at quarterback as Landon Best had his helmet come off and had to leave the field for a play. The clock continues to tick. Columbus Grove might just take a timeout. Nope, they run the play. And a big tackle in the backfield. Gannon got the carry. And he was hit hard and brought down by big 76. Dalton Durst, the 5'11", 230-pound senior. But the big thing is that clock continues to run. So it's going to come down to a time when Pandora's going to have to call a timeout. It's a loss of a yard, second down, 11. Best is back out there, quarterback. Josh Gannon lined up behind him. Two wide receivers split either way. Snap was low. They still get the ball to Gannon. Gannon still on his feet. Brought down after a gain of about four. Again, another big third down play here for Columbus Grove. Clock under three minutes. So it's actually a gain of five to bring up third and six. Rockets still with all three timeouts left. And they're going to save them here. So play will start right around 210. No, sorry, 220. Best takes the snap. He's looking to pass, still looking, still looking. Now he's going to take off. He has some space. He goes down, but he went down short of the first down. He went down at the 40-yard line. Looks like he could have gotten the remaining three yards he needed, but instead it's going to be fourth down and three. Wow. And if they don't convert this, that would be a real big turnaround because, you know, Pandora's still got all their timeouts left. They can get the ball back. Ball the 41 yard line, down and two. The clock's at 2.10, the referee says start it. The clock hasn't started yet, now it goes. So it is fourth down two, and we'll see what happens here. Have to imagine we're gonna see a hard count. Yeah, they're gonna try to pull PG off sides for sure. Why? Why? They take it all the time. And the referees say reset the play clock. Best comes back, 155 on the clock. Will they gamble or will they run the hard count? There it was. Down to one and a timeout by Coach Schaefer or was it a delay of game? Did he call it? I think he called it. He did indeed. So a timeout on the field, 143 on the clock. So Dar, imagine we're gonna see a punt here. Now this Pandora team has passed the ball relatively efficiently. Now a couple times Gurton's floated them high, but they've got two very good receivers on the outside. So it's going to be interesting to see how they run this last drive. Yeah, because if you keep assuming, it in the middle, sorry to interrupt you, assuming they get the uh, ball assuming back. Assuming they get the ball back. But, you know, they've been effective with passes over the middle to Morris, but he hasn't been able to really break it after he gets those catches on over the middle. But, you know, if you go over the middle with it, the clock's going to continue to run. You know, you stop it for first down, of course, if you can get it down there. But, you know, 
So I don't know. I mean, you go to the outside to Harris to try to get him to catch the ball and get out of bounds and stop the clock. You know, and save those three timeouts as much as you can. You know, it's going to be really interesting how you play this out if you're Pandora Gibbo, assuming you get the ball back again. On the flip side, Columbus Grove can, you know, you know, they got their punter out there. He's dropping back to punt, but anything can happen, too. You don't want to give Pandora the, the ball in this area right here, so you are potentially going to kick it away, but who knows? I mean, you know, these are veteran coaches. You can snap it up short and hope you get the two yards, too. So here we go. Back to punt is Trevin Baxter. Snap is good. Kick is away, nice spiraling kick down to the 22 yard line, Morris with the grab. Morris gets a nice block, now he's gonna reverse field. Morris, if he gets the edge, well, he doesn't, but he gets back up field and it looked like for a second, he might be able to break that no, down I'll the right side, but he cuts back in. A nice job by the coverage team of Columbus Grove, two players down. And with that, we'll step aside, 128 on the clock. It'll be a big drive for the Rockets when we return. Welcome back as we are about to resume play. Prayers, of course, to the player that was injured. Prayers for everyone that booed him when he went down. Initially, first down 10. Pass out to the left side. It's caught. You know, Dar, it's high school sports, 13 to 18 year old kids. And Injuries happen, they're a part of oh, the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, sometimes they're innocuous, sometimes they're not a big deal, sometimes they are, but you never know. You know, you don't. I mean, it's a contact sport. I mean, it's our, like you said, Evan, these are young kids, giving it everything they've got out there on the field, and people should give them everything they've got up here. Now we put the headsets on and Try to call this game as it's a first down. Dale's concrete first down. Aiden Harris, Colin Harris, excuse me, with the catch right at midfield. Stuff as a broadcaster, I can't imagine as a player, as a teammate, or as an opponent. But to come back out on the field and continue this game. We soldier on as that one's caught by Harris. Inbounds, the clock continues to tick. It's a gain of seven yards, or sorry, three yards, second down seven. But it feels almost surreal, like it's in slow motion right at the moment too. Girton throws this one in and out of the hands of Colin Harris, and maybe a fortunate drop if there is a such thing, because he would have been brought down in bounds and the clock would have continued to tick or Pandora would have to, had to take in a timeout. So, it's third down seven, or a long eight, depending on how you look at it. And you know what's coming now. You've got to go deep. you got to get somebody broken open, either down the sideline for a deep pass and possibly get it out of bounds. Snap through Girton's hands. He picks it up, still has a chance to do something with it, and he completes the pass. That's a tough one there. Carson Meyer with the catch. And the Rockets will take a quick timeout. It's a pickup of, it looks like they'll give him two or three yards. So a fourth down coming up. It's the Rockets' first timeout that they've used. They'll have two remaining. Columbus Grove still with all three of their timeouts. I want to thank our sponsors again tonight. The presenting sponsor was Union Bank. Our scoreboard sponsor, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Instant Replay, Simplified Flooring. First down sponsor, Dale's Concrete. And our touchdown sponsor, Northwest Ohio Recycling. We couldn't do it without you. As a nonprofit station, we rely on those sponsors as well as donations from viewers like you. You can head to WTLW.com to make a donation in any size. You can call the station if you're interested in donating or becoming a sponsor for high school sporting events. This one, 22-19, Columbus Grove on top, 44 seconds to go. And a big fourth down. And I, my guess is, is that if you're gonna call the play on this one here, you're gonna try to go and get that first down. 
you know, before you make a long you know, pass to the end zone. Gurton with the snap. Gurton passes. He's got a man. It's tipped, but it's caught. Oh, man. Colin Harris with the grab after it's tipped by Kyle Hopkins. And a first down for the Rockets. They'll rush back to the line of scrimmage. Adele's concrete first down. Wow. What great concentration by Harris on that sideline. Chains get set. Snap. Gurton throws. This time it's Morris with the catch. Morris over the middle. And he's near a first down. They'll stop the clock. It's a timeout for Pandora. So the second timeout of the half for them. They'll have one remaining with 25 seconds on the clock. It'll be second down and two. Well, actually, they move it to second down one. Rockets still with some time. Now, we haven't seen the full extent of new kicker Skyler Richardson's leg. The first PAT he took was nice and straight and yep. looked like it was pretty long. Second one went left, but still a nice high arcing kick, arching kick, excuse me. They're gonna need probably another 15 yards, I think, before you send the kid out there to try to, you know, you gotta get him within 30 yards. Especially a new new kicker. Uh, he is a senior, you know, so he's been around for a while, but. Split formation, two wide receivers either way. Gurton with Burkholder to his left. Looks to pass, has some time, now throws. He's got a man in the end zone. It's caught. No, it's incomplete. Wow. He was out of bounds. Colin Harris almost with the miracle catch, but it remains third down one. Well, that got everybody up on their feet, that's for sure. Boy, that was, you know, he was able to drag his foot in there just again like he did on that earlier catch. 19 on the clock, third and one. Three receivers to the right, and now we've got a timeout taken by Columbus Grove. They want to talk things over, especially after seeing Harris wide open on that play. 22-19. Halftime score was 13-0. Pandora on top. Then in a matter of two minutes toward the end of the third quarter, an offensive touchdown for Columbus Grove. And two plays later, an interception returned for a touchdown by Columbus Grove, Zach's, Zach Reynolds. That gave them a 14-13 lead. Two teams traded punches, and here we are, 22-19. A fantastic game on opening night of high school football here in Ohio. It's Thursday night lights. Evan Skilleter, Dar Nevergall with you. Grace these, Beck, you, Jacob O'Neill on the cameras. These two teams have locked up in some classic battles in recent years, and this is another one. You can see him calling Skylar uh, Richardson back up here real quick. You know, he's back down there practicing his kicking, and they called him back up to play one more play, and then if they can get him in field goal position, that's what's going to happen. Well, from here, it'd be about a 42-yard kick. Here's a pass. Morris with the catch. Morris has it. Ailes concrete first down. He's brought down with 13 on the clock. The Rockets will rush back up to the line of scrimmage. Coach Hershey calling for a spike. Clock starts, it's at 10. Here's the cat, or the snap, excuse me. They spike it with eight seconds left. They still have a timeout, Dar, so theoretically, they could throw a short pass over the middle and get a little bit closer for their kicker to come out. But with eight seconds, maybe a chance for a pass to the end zone to try one before you do something like that? I, I oh, boy, I don't know. That's. You risk an interception too, but this is a long kick for this kid here. Like I said, we don't know what kind of leg he's got, but. So from here, it would be about a 32 yarder. And it looks like the Rockets are gonna take a timeout. They are, they use their final timeout. The clock had stopped on the spike, but they decide they want some extra time to talk it over. That's the last time out. So now, 
that takes out of question the pass over the middle for yeah, some you're extra gonna... yards. You're either going to kick the field goal here or you're going to take a quick shot to the end zone. Or, well, yeah, because even if you try a pass to the sideline, you you're could. Eat off, you know, and he gets out of bounds, you're going to need off four seconds off the clock at least. So and you, and you could and do like a five yeah. or, or ten yard pass for those extra yards. Yeah, try to get it out to, to Harris on the sideline maybe or Car Carson Meyer on the sideline. Well, this is a tough call. This is why the coaches make the big bucks, right? That's right. I'm trying <laughs> to see where Skyler Richardson is standing. He's not going onto the field here. No. Gotta look for those orange shoes. They're down there somewhere. <laughs> That's right. He's in the midst, midst of everyone, right in the middle of the players on the sideline. So here we go. It's second down 10, but that hardly matters at this point. Girton to pass. Girton throws to the end zone. Clock at four. Passes up. It. Is he it caught? caught? It. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Caught it. <laughs> the Rockets back on top. With one second on the clock, a big catch in the end zone. And how about that, folks? Wow. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown near the buzzer. One second on the clock. And those receivers for Pandora have been big today as Aiden Morris with the big grab to put the Rockets back up. Wow, that was quite the throw to just the only place you could put it right there in that corner of that end zone and Girton did that. The line up for two. Girton in the gun takes the snap and that pass knocked away. It didn't matter a ton. And now we'll have a kickoff. One last chance for Columbus Grove. Oh my goodness. To get something done. But what a game we've <laughs> had tonight. My goodness, opening night doesn't get any better than this. Uh, that's that's incredible. <laughs> so a squib kick likely, perhaps just one of those little pooch kicks. Now, if you do one of those, they can call for a fair catch and still run one more play. Right, right. So we'll see what Coach Hershey and his special teams unit decides to do here. Try to put it on the ground, on the, just a short kick onto the ground, make it bounce a little bit, make the guy feel it that way, then it'll run the timeout. You know, you certainly are not gonna kick it long, that's for sure, because you don't wanna risk that. So, but you gotta get your guys down there to cover it up too. Well, they haven't kicked too many deep, if any, no, so no. far tonight. Uh -uh. One second to go again. Thank you so much to our sponsors tonight. Union Bank, Calker Drywall and Plastering, Simplified Flooring, Dales Concrete, Northwest Ohio Recycling. 25, 22, and a game that Looked like could slip away yeah. from the Rockets. Well, they were the the gears were returning. That's for sure as to what you wanted to do in that last, you know, last eight seconds. And they decided to go to the end zone, you know, one more time to the well before sending their kicker out there for the for a field goal. And it paid off with a great catch and a great pass. So it will be Lane Lee to kick this one. Lee keeps it on the ground. Ball still rolling, picked up by Barraza. Barraza flips it to his left. Now here's number six, that's Zach Reynolds. Reynolds ultimately goes down and that will do it. The wow. Rockets come from behind with a second left to win this game on opening night. It's Dar never go, Just my goodness. I mean, we saw a game that went back and forth and back and forth, and you saw Pandora dominate the game earlier on. Columbus Grove come back, and then, you know, you know, Pandora back again, and then just this last play. I mean, that, like I said, the gears must have been really churning over there on this Pandora side as to what to do. But give out credit at all 
to the, well, your senior receivers for Pandora Gilboa, obviously, but a sophomore quarterback that just laid that ball right in the only place he could because there was plenty of white shirts over there in that corner of that end zone, and he laid it right over all of them, right into the receiver's hands for the touchdown. Just incredible, incredible game. Fantastic game for you here on opening night on WOSN. Check out coverage of football on WOSN all year. Don't forget other fall sports that we'll have for you as well. Volleyball, boys and girls soccer, etc. The best coverage of high school sports in Northwest Ohio is right here on WOSN. One more time, your final from Pandora. The Rockets 25, Columbus Grove 22. Want to thank the Pandora Athletic Department for their hospitality. Want to thank our camera folks, Jacob O'Neill and Grace Beck. And as always, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to high school football on WOSN. For Dar Nevergal, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.